Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Master Mode Let's Play episode. We are doing a melee class, and last episode we defeated all three mechanical bosses and got hollowed armor and a bunch of other good items. I've done a little bit of farming in between episodes. I also revamped the farm here. I added some more crops, which are the strange plants and the blueberries and stuff. So I think that looks pretty cool. I also changed how we did torches in some of the areas and I added a wood fence to this part of the base and I think that makes it look a little bit more cohesive and it matches this side of the base too. Another thing I did was shorten the roof just a little bit. I removed one block from each side and I think it looks a lot more proportional now. I like that a lot better. Before I had it coming out two blocks and it looked a little too bulky. The other thing I did was farm a bunch of stuff in the jungle. We've got seven life fruits so let's go ahead and use those. So now our health is 450 and we just need 10 more life fruits to max our health out, but we'll get those eventually. And then we have the Yelts, which I think I was calling the Amazon last episode, but the Amazon is the pre-hard mode yo-yo uh, from the jungle. The Yelts is the one you can get after you defeat the mechanical bosses. Then we've got three turtle shells and here's the chlorophyte that we refined last episode. And we've also got a bunch more chlorophyte ore. So let's go ahead and make those into chlorophyte bars. Definitely want to craft the turtle armor first. That'll be good to have, although I don't think I want to use it over the hollowed because I really like the effect of the hollowed. But we'll definitely need turtle armor for when we get our beetle husks so we can craft beetle armor because that will be a really good one to have. The other thing I wanted to do is craft some light discs. We can craft five of those. And those will be a nice item to have, uh, maybe against Plantera, they could be pretty good. The other thing I did is find the last two ingredients for the Ankh Shield. We had actually already acquired everything else without really even farming, just doing the normal things we were doing in our playthrough. I usually get most of the Ankh ingredients just from farming up items at the start of hard mode. But yeah, we now have everything we need, I believe, to craft the Ankh Shield. So the first is the counter curse mantra, which is the megaphone and the nazar. So we'll do that. The next is the plan, which is the fast clock trifold map. And then we need to combine the bizarre and the adhesive bandage. And there we go. And the last one is the armor bracing, which is just armor polish and vitamins. And now we can craft the Ankh charm and combine that with the obsidian shield and we get the Ankh shield. And it naturally rolled with warding, which is incredible. That's exactly what I wanted on it. It boosts our defense just a little bit and it gives us some immunity, which is always good. So now that we've got everything ready to go, I think it is time to fight Plantera. Between the light discs and the yelts, I think we should be good to go. But we're just gonna have to see. This could be a pretty tricky fight. One thing I like to do before any boss fight is zoom out all the way. And that just gives us so much more visibility. We've got everything we need for our arena. The only thing we don't have is honey. Ooh, we have a Plantera bulb at the bottom of the arena. So let's go ahead and start this up. Hopefully these enemies slow down their spawn rates a little bit because we have so much going on. And where is Plantera? There we go. Okay, so we need to get close enough. Um. Let's see how the yo-yo does. Okay, yo-yo is much better if we can stay close. Yeah, this is this is going well. You just gotta keep doing circles and don't get hit by those <laughs> stingers like I just did right there. Oh, I don't even have my buffs on. There we go. I put a night owl buff on just to give us a little bit more visibility in here. That helps us see the stingers maybe a little bit better. Oops, I should have fallen through the platform a little faster there. Plantera, I think, is one of my favorite bosses in the game. The fight with her is kind of like a dance. It's really pretty fun. And once you get the hang of it, it just is a really satisfying fight to do. And you can see we stay towards the top and middle of the arena. And that way we don't get hit by all of those little things below us. Like those little uh, spiky balls that she throws. And then right here, we just try to dodge all these little hands. Ooh, we're struggling with it a little bit though. You know, I might switch 
just throwing daggers. That should help a little bit. In fact, we could switch off our yo-yo bag, put our warrior emblem back on. And yeah, we'll just use this for a little bit. Should help. Ooh, it's getting tricky to dodge. She's kind of catching up to me. Okay, I gotta get around her. Okay, we gotta do a heal. Man, this is tricky. No, we died. I was not expecting that. Okay, well, I just need a little practice, I think. Before we do that fight again, I wanna test our damage. So with our Shadow Flame Knife, we can do like 400, 440. With our Light Discs, we can do 380 or so, 400 sometimes. So the Light Discs actually are not that good. And then with the Yelts, it looks like with the yo-yo bag, we're up to like 630 or so. Turtle armor drops our damage slightly, but it really increases our defense. So I don't know. We may want to try it with turtle armor this time, just to see. We just need to go find another plant terra bulb, which I'll go do right now. And then we'll bring the fight over and start it up again. Okay, well, we've got plant terra and... Let's get this fight going. Hopefully this time we will do a little bit of a better job. We just need to get her down to the center of the arena so we can circle her a little bit better. Maybe bring her down just a little bit lower here. Okay. One thing we can also do is add some honey to the arena, which would be pretty good as well. Seems like the damage we're taking is a lot lower now with our turtle armor. Oh, I haven't put our buffs on. There we go, we've got buffs now. We'll just keep her kind of locked right here and just continue our pattern. I want to try to get her a little bit lower in the arena. There we go. That's better. The main thing is really going to be dodging her, all her little things that she shoots out in the next phase. But we're full on health. We've got potions ready. And here we go. I'm switching to Shadow Flame Knives. It's just too much going on here, which means I need to switch this over. Uh, okay, I think we're good. Okay, we'll throw on a healing potion. I need to be better about resetting my flight time. We'll get over to this side, get some distance. We've been between those. Oh no. No, those, oh, those armors are so bad. Okay, we're killing some of these now. Okay, this is getting stressful. This is getting so stressful. No, no, what am I doing? I did not want to leave my arena. We're ready for a potion. Okay, we're doing pretty good still. I think we might get this. 
This is one of the hardest Plantera fights I've ever done, I think. I could probably be better prepared for this, to be honest. I could probably get the Terra Blade, and that would help quite a bit. But I think we are good. Now that a lot of the hands are destroyed, we should be on our way to defeating Plantera. I think this is even harder than Death Mode Plantera. Because Death Mode Plantera, you just have so many good items by that point in the game. It makes the fight pretty simple. Hopefully we get the Seedler from this. That would be so amazing. I really want to get the Seedler. It's one of my favorite swords in the game. Oops. Getting hit a couple times. Almost got her. There we go. Plantera has been defeated. Let's go ahead and open up our treasure bag. We got our temple key, which is excellent. And we have the Plantera relic. We got an Uzi. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, oh, and another Yelts right there. Now let's go to the Jungle Temple and we can explore that, maybe pick up some solar tablets so we can get a Terra Blade eventually. So here we are at the Jungle Temple and let's start exploring. Oh, what I need to do is get like a Danger Sense. Something to help us out in here would be really nice. I don't think I wanna kill the Golem just yet. I think we're gonna need to upgrade to maybe the Terra Blade. That'd probably be good, because I know the Golem's a little bit harder than it used to be. Man, I really wish we had the Seedler. The Seedler destroys these mobs. Maybe I'll get that instead of the Terra Blade for the Golem. Or we'll get both, but I may try the Seedler out, because I know that's going to be really powerful. And we got a chest right here. Got some solar tablet fragments. I remember back in the day when there weren't any of those, and you had to actually just wait and wait for solar eclipses. Uh, those were rough days when you wanted to get the Terra Blade and you just had to wait so long for a solar eclipse. Okay, well it looks like we've reached the final room. And let's go ahead and remove all the traps from here. And then, like I said, I don't think we're ready to fight the Golem just yet. But we can get everything kind of set up. This is a pretty good sized room, fortunately. I think we'll be good to go for this fight. What we can do is just put some platforms across this, maybe like two layers of platforms. Yeah, so now that we've got our arena, I'm just gonna clear out these enemies and pick up the solar tablets that they're gonna drop. And then I think we're good to go. We can go start farming up some solar eclipses. And that's my cue to go back to base. <laughs> And so all we need are eight solar tablet fragments and we can craft our solar tablets. Okay, well now we've got the solar eclipse going and let's apply some buffs. Any little bit will help. And wow, we're feeling underpowered for this. We really need to get some items. Oh, that's cool. We got the lab coat. Oh man, I have a feeling we're gonna die a ton in here. This is not going to be good. Yeah, Master Mode Solar Eclipse seems pretty tricky. It's like taking so many hits just to kill a vampire. Although we did just get bat wings. That's kind of cool. Yeah, we're just going to need to take it nice and slow. And eventually we'll get these guys down. Uh, I wonder if we've got a better option for this. Ooh, we did just get a Psycho Knife. Maybe let's try that out. Yes, Psycho Knife. <laughs> Take that. As long as they're coming from a single direction and they're not the laser guy. Oh man, we're so dead. You get hit like twice and you're dead on these events. Yeah, the Psycho Knife's quite good. Okay. This is getting really close. We did get just a Moonstone though, that's pretty good. So maybe I'll try doing a different strategy of shooting enemies from a distance. 
We'll just treat it like a boss and just keep doing circles and eventually we'll take out some of these enemies. Well, I'm getting a little bit more of the hang of this. Making some pretty good progress here. We really haven't gotten any additional drops other than the Psycho Knife, but that's actually a pretty good weapon right now compared to a lot of the ones I have. Oh, we did just get this Toxic Flask, which would be pretty good if we were a mage. Ooh, and we got the Chainsaw. Nice. That could be a pretty good item to have. I don't really want to use it right here, though, because I think it might cut down all my trees. Although, maybe I'll give it a try over at this side. Ooh. That's doing pretty good. One thing I've noticed about Master Mode is that the boss fights are actually not that hard, but the enemies are hard in kind of a less fun way. <laughs> not to be critical of 1.4 master mode but like the events like the goblin invasion when you first fight it and this and some of the other events we've done it just seems like kind of obnoxiously uh, difficult where you just have to stay back and take it really slow and kind of cheese it a little bit because if you actually get into the action you just die instantly that's one of the things I mean I would prefer if master mode had like a harder AI for the bosses or even just harder bosses in general and for the events and just general enemies to be a little bit less uh, tanky. Because I think if these enemies had less health, it would be a lot more fun. Because this, the event would go a lot faster. You'd get more loot and everything. Well, from that event, we got some vanity items. We've got the bat wings. We've got the toxic flask. A moonstone, which is good. And then we've got the chainsaw and a psycho knife. So we got some stuff, but... What I want to do now is let's go and try to get the Crimson Knives. I think that will be the biggest improvement for us. If we can get some good self heal, we can come back and do the Solar Eclipse a lot better. Ooh, we just got our Legendary Psycho Knife. And I think that will be a pretty fun one to use. I'll probably use that quite a bit now. So I've crafted a whole bunch more Slime Crowns so we can summon the King Slime. And what we can do is fight him over and over in the crimson biome. And this will allow us to get a high chance of finding a crimson key. So let's get this started. And we can just use our psycho knife and kill him really quickly. And this gives us a high chance of getting the item because we get to kill all of these different slimes. And yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get it. There we go. I think I'm going to make a few more slime crowns and then let's go find a bigger corruption biome. Maybe this one over here and we'll do some more farming. Well, we are near the cool abandoned mansion and we've got plenty of crimson over here. So let's get some more slime king summoned and hopefully we can get the crimson key here in a little bit. Be super nice. I was hoping we'd get the key by now, but sometimes it just takes a really long time to find these keys. So I finally got our crimson key and it feels amazing. I may have gone a little bit crazy during this farming experience because that's the longest I think I've had to farm for a key. That was kind of insane. I killed the king slime countless times in the crimson biome and we got a lot of banners, trophies, and all sorts of stuff. But we do have the key now, so we can head over to the dungeon and we can do the crimson chest. And that should give us enough power to do the solar eclipse pretty efficiently. And one nice thing is that with all of this stuff, we actually can get a ton of gold because a lot of it sells for a decent amount. This is another place that I think is going to be insanely tricky because I have a feeling that the enemies in here are going to be very, very powerful. And yeah, so let's see how this goes. Hopefully it's not too bad and hopefully we can find the crimson chest without too many issues because that's really the main thing we're looking for in here. I don't really need any of the other gear, I don't think. Well, the paladin shield would be super nice. Ooh, it's so cool to see the new enemies in the dungeon. 
They look so nice. Oh man, I'm so glad they resprited these. Ooh, this is gonna be tricky though. Yeah, if we get hit by that, we're gonna be done for. There we go, Crimson Key. Yes! Let's go ahead and just open both of these, grab everything. Vampire knives. So happy. Man, the Psycho Knife's actually really good. I don't think I've ever used it, but it's actually quite powerful. And it's pretty easy to get since the Psychos run around quite a bit during the Solar Eclipse. Oh, they rolled Godly on a natural roll. That is so good. We are set. Let's go back to base. And it's daytime, so we can just jump right into a Solar Eclipse. Yes, Vampire Knives, so nice. And they're doing pretty good damage. About as much damage as any of the weapons I've got. Actually, they're doing more. We're doing like 600, 700 damage. One of the things I really wanna do is get some banners for these enemies. And then we will be in such good shape to farm them up quickly. Ooh, we got a death sickle. Yes. This is such a good weapon. This will probably be good on Golem as well. Well, this is going pretty well. We've gone through most of the day and we haven't died yet. And we got a death sickle. So even if we just got that, that should be enough to let us continue progressing. And then we can always come back to farming up these events after we defeat the golem. Okay, this is amazing. I don't know if they drop that insane yo-yo or not, but I don't want to miss out on this moth run. I'm going to apply my buffs just in case we don't have any on. And we can get a Mothron. The chances of us getting a Broken Hero Sword is quite high. Okay, almost got it. And we didn't get anything. That's a bummer. Okay, here we go. Another Mothron. Another chance for success. Let's hope for the best here. We've got a few difficult mobs though. We've got the lasers and we've got one of those spike head guys. So we just gotta be careful about them. Ooh. Yeah, this is gonna be a rough fight. We've got too many enemies. Luckily though, our self-heal is keeping us alive and we should be able to get it done. And we got Mothron wings. Those are pretty good, I think. I think they're probably better than our frost wings. I'll have to look that up. We just finished our second solar eclipse and it went so much better. We didn't die a single time and we got lots of good items here. So we've got the deathsicle, a few more chainsaws and things like that. But the main thing is Mothron wings and our deathsicle. So we didn't get any broken hero swords, unfortunately. And I think that's a good place to end this episode. We've farmed up so many items and enemies. In between episodes, I want to do some more farming in the jungle. I want to try to get the rest of our life fruit and maybe kill Plantera a few more times and get the Seedler Sword. I think that would be pretty powerful. I hope you all have been enjoying this series. If you have, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.